What is up Toyota fans? Today we are back with a special video. We have some nice spider tracks, wheel spacers we are going to put on the 2006 4Runner. These are straight from Amazon and they're pretty popular, so let's jump right in. So these are the 1.25 inch spider tracks wheel spacers. These fit all sorts of different kinds of Toyotas, like the Tacoma, the Sequoia, and a few others, as well as the 4Runner, which is what I'm putting them on today. These are one of the most popular wheel spacer options on the market, with Spider Tracks being a pretty well known brand. And that's exactly why I decided to go with these, even though they were a little bit more expensive. I'm putting these on my 4Runner in preparation for fitting 285 tires. And so, looking at the before for the spacing of the rim on the car, these wheels are a 30 millimeter offset, which puts them right inside the fender. And I'm hoping to push them out a little bit and make them about even with the fender. Here is the specific SKU and model number of this item for your reference. The tools I'm using in this install are a jack, jack stands, a torque wrench, and a ratchet wrench, and a few other odds and ends. It is important to make sure you practice good jack safety, uh, jacking up on somewhere that is flat, level, and also use jack stands to avoid any catastrophe. So the first thing I'm going to do is obviously jack up one side of the vehicle, uh, but first I had to loosen the lug nuts, and from there, jack until the tire's off the ground, and then remove the tire itself. I'm also using the lug wrench that is in the back of the 4Runner that comes with the vehicle, just to make it a little quicker and easier to remove these lug nuts. So at this point, I went ahead and removed the tire, and that exposed the rotor itself. These rotors are pretty new, I replaced them only maybe six months ago and so they're still pretty in pretty good shape. They do need a little bit of cleaning so I grabbed some brake cleaner and a rag and sprayed these down and wiped them. The reason I did this was just because I want to have a clean surface that way when I put the spacer on it fits really well and there's nothing in between the rotor and the spacer just to get the best fitment I could and avoid any potential problems. And look at me, I'm even reading the directions. All right, enough of that. I then grabbed the tiny container of the red Loctite. This is included with the spacers themselves. This is different from the blue Loctite because it is more sturdy when you put the part on and it is a lot harder to take off, which is fine because I want these spacers to stay on the wheel as tightly as possible. So after I put them on the threads of the lug itself, then I was able to put the spacer on and then use the bolts provided along with the directions to put them all in. I first hand tighten them and then get them snug with a ratchet. It is important to note that on the front brakes, when you try to tighten them down, you're going to need someone to step on the brake because even if you have the parking brake on, it doesn't lock the front tires. And so I had someone step on the brake and I was able to torque them down to 90 foot pounds, just like the directions said. So with the Loctite applied and the bolts and nuts torqued to spec, that pretty much concludes putting on the first spacer. While I had the wheel off, I went ahead and cleaned it, just because why not? You can't really get this angle with the wheel on the car. And then I set it out to dry shortly after cleaning it. Also cleaning the back side of the hub just gives it even a better fitment up against the spacer itself. After about 15 to 20 minutes in the Alabama sun, the tire was dry and ready to be put back on. So I lifted it into place and started hand tightening the lug nuts. From there, I moved to grabbing the uh, lug nut bar that comes with the vehicle and kind of snug them up a little bit. I didn't tighten them all the way because I waited until I had the torque wrench to torque them to spec. And that's about all there is to it. So of course we moved to the next side. I just did pretty much the same thing. It went pretty smoothly on the last side and the front is definitely a little bit more tedious than the back but overall it's a super simple installation you don't really have to have a ton of experience as long as you can follow the directions provided and you have the proper tools i actually had to go buy a torque wrench before this video because my old one was i was borrowing it from my buddy and he needed it back so unfortunate but it was about time i got my own and i was enjoying working with a nice new one so we were able to move quickly and efficiently on that side and before I knew it, it was time to put back on the tire. I was struggling because it was a heat advisory in Alabama. It was uh, temperatures 
upper 90s to 100, but you know, I was making the best of it and I needed to get these spacers on before I got my 285s. So snugging everything up with the torque wrench, this pretty much concludes the front and we can move on to the back. What I ended up doing on the back side was I jacked the vehicle up by the rear axle, which allowed me to take off both tires in the back. Of course, I did put jack stands under there. And then I went ahead and cleaned both of the tires pretty well and let them sit out in the sun to dry. Then I grabbed my second set of spacers. Of course, it's the same exact as the set I put in the front. Went ahead and cleaned and loctited before fitting the spacers themselves. There I am bowing up on the torque wrench. And then I moved to the last one. I was getting pretty hot and sweaty by this point, but of course I pushed through. Fitting the spacer, tightening the bolts down, and torquing them to spec. Again, this is very repetitive and tedious. But at this point, we are almost done. All we had to do was grab the clean tires and fit them back on the car. From there, I could tighten them to spec and then finish up the installation by jacking down the vehicle. So this installation ended up taking about an hour and a half. And overall, I am really happy with how it turned out. Now, these spacers didn't do anything super tremendous for the width of the base of the vehicle because the of the 30 millimeter offset which kind of put the tires inward a little bit as you can see they are just barely sticking out on the outside of the fender so the difference is a little bit subtle but if you know what you're looking for you can definitely tell me because i drive this every day i could tell a difference right off the bat and i really do think that it gives it just a slightly more aggressive look it also lets you see the tread a little bit better from the front view which we'll take a look at in a second so check out these shots of the finished product. That about wraps up today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like seeing these cool videos about mods and upgrades on your Toyota, please consider subscribing. And also, if you're looking to upgrade your vehicle, check out the link in the description, toyrunnercustoms.com. Peace.